but really you could say that about a hometown. Your hometown is at the heart of where your experiences began. It's where you put down roots. It's where you grew up. Hello, I'm TV9's Wendy Brown. Welcome to Our Town, a celebration of communities in the heart of eastern Iowa. Communities rich with history, steeped in tradition, full of pride. Tonight, our town is Fairfield. Qualifies as the most significant change in Fairfield in the last 25 years. The unusual philosophies taught also makes for perhaps Iowa's most unusual town and gown relationship. Many entrepreneurs and practitioners of transcendental meditation, drawn by the school, stayed and set up businesses that have grown and prospered. You know, a lot of big businesses that actually do no business in Fairfield, but they office in Fairfield, and people live here because of that. That would be uh, mounted on a metal pipe. Uh... Unusual and innovation. Those words could describe Fairfield residents 100 years ago as well as today. David mentioned three main things that drives Fairfield's economy, agriculture, education, and business. Most small towns have only small businesses to drive their economy, but our town Fairfield has a business that's not only touching lives here in Iowa, but also lives around the world. TV9's Ryan Girding shows us one of the fastest growing businesses in the nation that's right here in our town Fairfield. It's a, it's a more relaxed atmosphere here, and I think people feel like uh, our productivity doesn't depend on, uh, you know, whether we wear a suit every day, but, you know, how well we serve our customers. And they have a lot of customers, hundreds of thousands in 150 different countries. Telegroup is a growing power in the telecommunications business. They've managed to park a lot of business from their offices in Fairfield. They're a competitive phone company, just like AT&T or Sprint. But they'll say just like it and a little better. In our town, Ryan Girding, KCRG, TV9 News. Telegroup has such a high demand for quality employees, some of its workers actually drive in from Missouri every single day. A little bit later on, we'll tell you about another business that's bringing in customers from all over. Customers that are looking for a unique way to get a little rest and relaxation. But for Inc. Magazine recently named us the second fastest growing privately held company in America. We give businesses and international callers lower telephone rates. If you want to pay less on your phone bill, give us a call. But the growth has been explosive. 1990, billings of $270,000. 1995, over $125 million. Telegroup gains over 100,000 loyal customers plus worldwide recognition. Telegroup's mission, to provide the best communication service at the lowest cost. Telegroup began in the United States with the resale of the AT&T network, offering its customers savings of 30 to 40 percent. Telegroup took the lead in providing discounted long-distance services to the U.S. consumer at a low flat rate through innovative rep programs and the reselling of other carrier services like Sprint, Wiltel, and Cable and Wireless. From 275,000 minutes billed in 1989 to over 119 million minutes in 1992, Telegroup established itself as one of the leading resellers of U.S. long-distance service. Up next, find out why this university is taking learning to a different degree. Then later learn about a business on the cutting edge. Stay with us. Welcome back to our town, Fairfield. Fairfield grew substantially in 1974 when Maharishi International University came to town. The university took over the campus that once belonged to Parsons College. Students here at Maharishi can earn degrees that are offered by other college universities. But as TV9's Iowa City reporter Mike Wagner tells us, the university also focuses on unique styles of learning. This was really a golden opportunity because it was 1.2 million square feet, you know, fully equipped. It had gone bankrupt. There was nothing like it really in the United States. Keith Wallace helped turn that golden opportunity into golden domes for Maharishi University. The school bought Parsons College in 1974. Fairfield's mayor welcomed the university and its founder, the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, to town. Currently established in Fairfield just seven short months ago, Fairfielders from all walks of life 
again recognize the pioneering and an innovative and a challenging process in the name of higher education in our midst. Construction crews built the school's popular gold domes, campus landmarks, and also a place to practice transcendental meditation. A better student body mentally and physically, it wants to expand numerically. School officials plan to spread the message of meditation and education around the country and around the world. Mike Wagner, KCRG TV9 News. Well, after a year's studying, weeks of work, or whatever, how can one unwind in Fairfield? In the lap of luxury, of course. TV9's Gerald Vesnick shows us a home away from home that's good for your physical and your mental health. <laughs> The owners of Our Town's newest hotel appropriately named it The Mansion, and they spared no expense. The first thing people probably notice is... The patios around the building. The 20 suites are tailor-made for business travelers with digital phone lines and computer hookups. A spa similar to the Raj Health Center next door will offer herbal treatment and oil massage like this. It's very exquisite, and one thing that's nice about it, it's all natural fibers. We have cotton sheets, wool carpets, marble um, bathrooms and floors, and we tried to use pure natural fiber so that it's a pollution-free environment. An environment so attractive, in two months, the mansion sold out its timeshare options. The influence comes from nearby Maharishi University. The master plan shows 500 rooms on the mansion site, all part of a sprawling 1,000-acre resort complex. There's a huge interest for relaxation and rejuvenation while you're on a vacation. A vacation, they say, gives rest, peace of mind, and leaves you feeling like a different person. In our town, Fairfield, Gerald Resnick, KCRG, TV9 News. Some people enjoy their stay at the mansion so much they never want to leave. Of course. One business in our town, Fairfield, is a world leader in a booming industry. The multi-million dollar Creative Edge Corporation specializes in water jet technology. TV9's Mark Thomas takes us inside this unique company. This is a water jet, the key to success for Fairfield's Creative Edge Corporation. And most of the world didn't know what it was good for. And it has slowly revealed itself to us uh, what the applications are. Wide array of products that Creative Edge makes, from airline parts to hip joints, and even little signs you'd find at your neighborhood pool. What you have to do is cut each one of these squares that has a number in it. Creative Edge executives expect the water jet industry to continue to expand well into the 21st century. You know, it's amazing how much culture a small community can cultivate. In fact, because of the different businesses and the unique university, downtown Fairfield hosts a potpourri of diverse dining, food from Thailand, India, China, Mexico, and others. Food for thought the next time you are flying through a small town like Fairfield. We've shipped millions of jobs overseas, and uh, we have a strange situation because we have a process in Washington where after you've served for a while, you cash in, become a foreign lobbyist, make $30,000 a month, then take a leave, work on presidential campaigns, make sure you've got good contacts, and then go back out. Now, if you just want to get out of brass tax, first thing you ought to do is get all these folks who've got these one-way trade agreements that we've negotiated over the years, and say, fellas, we'll take the same deal we gave you. And they'll gridlock right at that point because, for example, we've got international competitors who simply could not unload their cars off the ships if they had to comply. You see, if it was a two-way street, just couldn't do it. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. To those of you in the audience who are business people, pretty simple. If you're paying $12, $13, $14 an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, hire a young 25... That's assume you've been in business for a long time, you've got a mature workforce. Pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element, making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement. 
and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. So we, if, if the people send me to Washington, the first thing I'll do is study that 2,000 page agreement and make sure it's a two-way street. turned out to be a defining moment for our nation. I spoke with one of the uh, folks who was in the reception just a few moments ago who told me that he was in China watching the vote on international television when it was taken and he said you would have had to be there to understand how important this was to the rest of the world. Not because of the terms of NAFTA which basically is a trade agreement between the United States, Mexico, and Canada, but because it became a symbolic struggle for the spirit of our country and for how we would approach this very difficult and rapidly changing world dealing with our own considerable challenges here at home. In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. NAFTA will tear down trade barriers between our three nations. It will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country by 1995 alone. Already the confidence we've displayed by ratifying NAFTA has begun to bear fruit. We're now making real progress toward a worldwide trade agreement so significant that it could make the material gains of NAFTA for our country looks small by comparison. Today we have the chance to do what our parents did before us. We have the opportunity to remake the world. For this new era, our national security we now know will be determined as much by our ability to pull down foreign trade barriers as by our, our ability to breach distant ramparts. For more, we're joined by two guests. In Washington, D.C., Lori Wallach is director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. They've written a new report called NAFTA at 20. In a moment, we'll go to Mexico. Lori, talk about NAFTA 20 years later. Well, not only haven't the promises made by its proponents come true, but in most instances, the actual opposite occurred. For instance, Listening to President Clinton made my blood boil because in no year of NAFTA were 200,000 jobs created. Rather, now 20 years out, 1 million net U.S. jobs have been lost to the growing trade deficit with Mexico and Canada under NAFTA. And there's a list of an explicit 400,000 with Canada, 845,000 total jobs lost. Explain NAFTA for the loss of manufacturing jobs in industrial states including Ohio and Pennsylvania. I have been a critic of NAFTA from the very beginning. Hillary Clinton helped get NAFTA approved. She held at least five meetings to strategize about how to win congressional approval. She helped the White House block opposition from labor and environmental groups. And she was the featured speaker at a crucial meeting. Participants in that event said, quote, her remarks were totally pro-NAFTA. There was no equivocation for her support for NAFTA at the time. It is not enough just to criticize NAFTA, which I have, and for some years now. I have put forth a very specific plan. Neither of us voted on this. That wasn't something either of us got to cast an independent vote on. I didn't have a public position on it because I was part of the administration. Oh, I think that uh, everybody is in favor of free and fair trade, and I think that uh, uh, NAFTA is proving its worth. You wrote about as a real success for your husband. You said it was good on balance for New York and America in 2004. And now you're in Ohio and your words are much different, Senator. The record is very clear. Well, I, I, you don't have all the record because you can go back and look at what I've said consistently. And I haven't just said things. If you look at what I have been saying, it has been consistent. Senator Obama said that you did say in 2004 that on balance NAFTA uh, has been good for New York and America. You did say that. When President Clinton signed this bill, and this was after he negotiated two new side agreements for labor and environment, President Clinton said it would be a force for economic growth and social progress. You said in 96 it was proving its worth as free and fair trade. 
You said that in 2000 it was a good idea that took political courage. So your record is pretty clear. Was NAFTA a mistake? NAFTA was a mistake to the extent that it did not deliver on what we had hoped it would. A Trump administration will change our failed trade policies, and I mean quickly. Thank you. Here are seven steps I would pursue right away to bring back our jobs. Number one, I am going to withdraw the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership which has not yet been ratified.
I'm going to appoint the toughest and smartest, and I know them all, trade negotiators to fight on behalf of American workers. I'm going to direct the Secretary of Commerce to identify every violation of trade agreements a foreign country is currently using to harm you, the American worker. I will then direct all appropriate agencies to use every tool under American and international law to end these abuses, and abuse is the right word. Number four, I'm going to tell our NAFTA partners that I intend to immediately renegotiate the terms of that agreement to get a better deal by a lot, not just a little, by a lot for our workers. And if they don't agree to a renegotiation, which they might not, because they're so used to having their own way, not with Trump, they won't have their own way. Then I will submit under Article 2205 of the NAFTA agreement that America intends to withdraw from the deal. Number five, I'm going to instruct my Treasury Secretary to label China a currency manipulator, which should have been done years ago. Any country that devalues their currency in order to take unfair advantage of the United States, which is many countries, will be met with sharply, and that includes tariffs and taxes. Number six, I'm going to instruct the U.S. Trade Representative to bring trade cases against China, both in this country and at the WTO. China's unfair subsidy behavior is prohibited by the terms of its entrance to the WTO, and I intend to enforce those rules and regulations and basically I intend to enforce the agreements for all countries including China. Seven, if China does not stop its illegal activities including its theft of American trade secrets, I will use every lawful president. Hey look, this is very easy. This is so easy. I would love saying this. I will use every lawful presidential power to remedy trade disputes, including the application of tariffs consistent with Section 201 and 301 of the Trade Act of 1974 and Section 232 of the Trade Expansion Act of 1962. And when they say trade expansion, they're talking about other countries. They're not talking about us because there is no expansion. They get the expansion, we get the joblessness. That's the way it works. Not gonna happen anymore.